Volkswagen and Rivian, what exactly is it that they're giving to Volkswagen and why are they giving it to them? And what's included in that deal? There's a whole lot of misinformation and conflicting information, so let's talk about it. Hey everyone, I don't have any new testing to share yet. Don't worry, there is more coming. But uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Volkswagen and Rivian joint venture deal. Uh, there's a lot of chatter about it online, a lot of good information and a lot of misinformation about what's included, what's not, exactly what it means. So I figured we could dive into that a little bit. Uh, so before we start, let's talk a little bit about how car electrical architecture works now. Um, as it stands, vehicles have just tons of little computers, otherwise known as ECUs, just scattered throughout the vehicle for different functions. Um, you know, this started with very simple things like fuel injection. Hey, it would be really nice to have the fuel injection managed electronically so you can get precise timing. Great. We'll make a tiny little computer an ECU that'll manage that. And at some point we decided, hey, you know what? It might be kind of nice to have power locks. Let's make an ECU for that. And then, oh, you know what? It might be kind of nice to have powered seats as well. So let's have another ECU to manage that. And as you can see, as more and more components in the vehicle started getting smarter and started getting computerized, then we started transitioning into this world of a software controlled vehicle. But we have just, you know, dozens of these electronic control units scattered throughout the vehicle all made by different manufacturers, doing different things, sometimes speaking different languages. And it, it's just the kind of chaos. Honestly, I, I have to say it's almost a miracle that we have cars that function as well as they do with so many different components and manufacturers all operating in concert. Um, and, you know, it works OK. It, it's a little chaotic, but it works. Where it really becomes problematic, though, is when you start doing more complicated functions that require multiple ECUs to coordinate together. Um, you know, so if, take, for example, on Rivian. When you walk up to the front of the vehicle, you have the lights turn on, you have the mirrors unfold, um, you have it recall the memory setting associated with your profile. Those are several different components all reacting together. And in a traditional architecture, when you have dozens of ECUs, you have to coordinate that function with a whole bunch of different ECUs, speaking a whole bunch of different languages from a whole, different, a whole bunch of different manufacturers, and it, it gets kind of complicated. Um, so, you know, if you're designing a vehicle from the ground up today, um, you would design it that way. That's kind of how we evolved naturally over the course of the last several decades but if you were starting clean sheet today, you would do things a little bit differently. And RJ has been, you know, pretty clear about how he's talked about that and why they've designed, especially Gen 2, the way that they have. So that's where the zonal architecture comes into play. Uh, the zonal architecture is what Volkswagen is buying from Rivian. And we'll get to why Volkswagen wants to buy that in a second. But this is kind of like the big thing that they're buying for Rivian. So essentially the idea with a zonal architecture is that you take the complexity out of all of those dozens of ECUs. You say, well, it makes more sense to kind of consolidate those functions into a single computer, into a single ECU. And so then you divide the vehicle into zones. So the way that Rivian has done that with R1, at least Gen 2 R1, is you have west zone on the left side, east zone on the right side, and south zone on the rear. And you sort of divide functions up between these main three zonal controllers. And they control everything in their area, from lights to the door latches and locks to the seats moving. Um, you know, it's, it, it combines a whole bunch of different things into a single component, which makes for a much simpler system. Now, it's not entirely just zone architecture in the Gen 2 R1. Um, there still are a few different what they call domain controllers or older style ECUs that just have like a specific function that they're over. However, 
even just this mostly migration to zonal has made a huge difference. We're down to seven ECUs and we've eliminated 1.6 miles of wiring in Gen 2 R1. So that makes a big difference. And when I say we, I'm talking as if I'm a Rivian employee. I'm not. I'm not a Rivian employee. I just think it's cool. Um, but uh, anyway, getting back to it, um, this is what VW wants from Rivian. This is the thing that they see as so valuable. They want to pay $5.8 billion. So this is a big deal um, because in the world of tomorrow, vehicles are software defined. When you have a new function that you want to push out, you want to be able to do it as a software update, you know, just like we've seen Rivian and Tesla successfully do. Um, other auto manufacturers have been able to do it to some degree of success, but neither of them have been quite as successful as Rivian and Tesla. And that is in part because of the zonal architecture. When you control a small handful of ECUs, it's so much easier to be able to send an over the air update as opposed to sending something for, you know, 15 different modules that you didn't even manufacture. Um, so this is all part of why Volkswagen wanted to do that. So let's dive a little bit deeper into what exactly Volkswagen is getting and what they're not getting, because there does seem to be some conflicting and confusing information floating around. So let's try and clear that up. So at its base, it's the zonal architecture that they're getting. The joint venture is essentially taking the zonal architecture that was developed for R1 Gen 2 and R2 coming up, and it's making it a more universal platform. Uh, they're making it so that it can be applied to a whole portfolio of different kinds of vehicles. We're talking everything from the upcoming Volkswagen Everyone. It's like a little city commuter car that's for the European market. It's supposed to be the first one that's employing Rivian technology. Uh, so everything from that up to, in the future, the Scout with like a range extending engine on it. Um, so they just sort of like taking this and making it more universal. So that means that they're taking the actual ECUs, the hardware design for it, the motherboards, um, possibly like some electrical connectors and wiring and a lot of like the physical components that make this happen. Okay, quick editor's note on this. Rivian is not providing Volkswagen the actual physical hardware. They're providing designs for the physical hardware. That's part of the joint venture, what Volkswagen is getting. They're also getting a software component as well. And the software component is going to be the operating system that runs on all of these ECUs. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't remember the name of it. I'll insert a clip where <laughs> I remember the name of the operating system. The operating system that Rivian uses on their zonal controllers is called Safe Artists. So whatever operating system ends up going onto the Volkswagen version of this architecture will probably be something very closely related to that. But Rivian has developed this operating system that runs on all of these things. And there's, you know, communication protocols, you know, the, the way that it communicates with like, you know, sensors and cameras and things like that. Um, the way that these ECUs communicate with each other across the vehicle's network. Um, so there's a whole bunch of different software and hardware components that are a part of it, all building this, this zonal architecture. So one of the things that are not included, and this is where there has been some misinformation and some confusion. The number one thing that is not included with this is motors and battery. When they say electrical architecture, they're talking about the computer control side of it. Um, when it comes to anything on the chassis, battery chemistry, motor design, uh, even the inverters, the suspension, all of that stuff is going to stay proprietary to the company. And honestly, that's probably better for Rivian because that is a huge part of what makes a Rivian a Rivian is their drivetrain and chassis design. Another component being left out of the Volkswagen joint venture is the infotainment system. The Rivian infotainment system on R1 runs on Android Automotive not to be confused with Android Auto. Android Auto is a mirrored version of your phone's interface, while Android Automotive is an operating system that runs on the Rivian. So it's a very highly customized version of Android Automotive. So it's a 
a basic operating system, but Google basically doesn't provide any of the functionality or features that we use day to day. It's just the base level operating system that lives underneath the features and interface that we interact with. That is all 100% Rivian built on Android Automotive. Unclear if Android Automotive will be part of the architecture that Rivian and Volkswagen are building. Um, but whatever the infotainment system on the Volkswagen side ends up being, it will be developed entirely independent of Rivian. So that means that features that you see on Rivian, for example, camp courtesy or dog mode, while those things could exist on the Volkswagen side, that doesn't necessarily mean that Volkswagen is going to automatically inherit them. They would have to develop their own version of that feature from the ground up because they will not be getting that from Ruby. The third, and I think most important one to differentiate here is the ADAS system. So if you've seen my past content about Rivian autonomy, talking about how Rivian ditched the mobilized system, talking about radars versus cameras, all of that is Rivian proprietary. This is stuff that is running on Rivian's own platform. The joint venture will include some elements that play into autonomy. For example, the ECUs are going to have a way that connects to radars and sonars and cameras and other sensors like that. So there will be components that play into autonomy, but the actual autonomy stack, the, the driver safety, driver assistance stuff, all of that is Rivian proprietary that runs on their own autonomy computer and their own autonomy machine learning software. So that won't be inherited by Volkswagen. And again, Volkswagen will have the ability now, especially with the zonal architecture, to build their own very robust uh, safety and autonomy system to whatever degree they decide they want to do that. Um, maybe they'll end up buying a component from another company. Maybe they will decide to develop something themselves that uh, draws on the zonal architecture and how it can take advantage of the sensors. But all of that will be left up to Volkswagen themselves. So in a nutshell, what's included with the Volkswagen joint venture? It's the electrical architecture, the zonal architecture that runs the vehicle, all of the electronic control components. What's not included with it? Powertrain, battery, and chassis, infotainment system, and ADAS. So hopefully this clears some things up. If you're interested in seeing more content about EV tech and autonomy, hit subscribe. I've got some cool stuff that I plan on doing in the future. On the next one, I'm going to take a look at efficiency and see exactly how Rivian's autonomy system affects efficiency. Until next time. Okay, start over. We're going again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I completely said that entirely wrong. Oh my gosh. Thank goodness for editing. Okay. Let's get over here.